This is Impact Defense with a public service announcement. Please do not overestimate your ability to defend yourself. That is all. Welcome to the Impact Defense Podcast. Podcast. We're dedicated to giving you the information that you need to help keep you safe. Now, let's join our hosts, Brian and Jada. Hey guys, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are actually going to talk about overestimating one's ability uh, to defend yourself in a real situation. Have, have you ever run across someone that overestimates their abilities? Oh no, only people that know absolutely everything and can uh, tell me how to do my job better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have been doing this for 18 years. Jada has been doing this for oh, not 18 years, but... <laughs> Since I was one. I've been teaching this since I was one. <laughs> so over the 18 years that I've been actually instructing, um, I have I have run into people all the time, actually, that, that just automatically assume when they come into a class that I'm teaching or they, they've paid for a seminar or paid for a workshop or a course that I'm teaching, and they want to come in and tell me that, you know, what I'm doing is wrong. Um, you know, because they watched this dude on YouTube for five minutes and they, and it doesn't matter the credentials, you know, it doesn't matter the credentials of the person actually instructing the course, you know, okay. I never stopped training. I'm still training. I'm, you know, constantly training with people. Uh, the people I'm training with some of the best in the world, you know, for me, um, yeah, I've got some traditional martial arts backgrounds, fourth degree black belt Kyokushin, uh, third degree black belt Japanese Jiu Jitsu. I have a ranking in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I, you know, did some Krav Maga. I'm a certified kickboxing instructor. I'm a certified Cobra defense instructor. I'm a certified pistol instructor. I'm a concealed carry permit instructor. Um, you know, but the list just matter. keeps going on. <laughs> like that's not even all. And people are just like, yeah, sorry, bruh. It's you know, fun. um, Sensei Jimbo on YouTube, he says you're wrong. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> sorry to break it to you, but you know, you just, you just don't know your stuff. <laughs> I mean, somebody, they don't generally come out and say it that way exactly, but it's close sometimes. You know, and we're sitting, <laughs> we're sitting here and, you know, it, and it's funny that you bring it up that way because, you know, a lot of times kids and students and stuff like that, they call me sensei in our regular traditional classes and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, a lot of those guys, especially the ones that run around, spout off and refer to themselves with a title on social media. If you guys do that, if anybody's listening that does that, I am sorry for what I'm about to say. But if so, check yourself on this one to make sure you're not one of these guys. I have run into most of the guys that on social media and stuff that refer to themselves as Sensei such and such or, you know, Shihan such and such or whatever kind of title they want to put themselves. Coach. Well, yeah, but that's honestly them a little less than the guys who want to throw out the titles or Sifu mm -hmm. something or other. Um, they have stayed in that traditional bubble for so long that a lot of times they don't actually realize what really works in real self-defense. And if any of you are listening to me and you are the person who runs around with that title, okay, that's fine to each their own, but make sure that you are actually... If you are listening to this, please make sure you are actually spending time in real self-defense and not just what you learned because that's what no, your instructor taught you. I really am tired of people coming in and just saying, you can just obviously tell that they believe pretty much anything they hear. It's like, well, I'm sorry that you believed what Shifu on Kung Fu Panda said, but <laughs> um, this is the real life, so maybe just take a second and listen to what we have to say. It, it goes it, it goes well beyond traditional martial arts. I know I, I joked around about this stuff, but because, you know, that was my background. That's where I got started in everything. You know, I've said it before. I'm very blessed to have the guy that was my instructor, that was my instructor, um, kind of set me on that right path. But even so, most of the guys that are in that traditional martial arts field are a lot easier to pick on because they like to stay in their bubble instead of actually getting out and finding what happens in a real fight. But... It goes beyond traditional martial arts. You know, uh, again, pistol instructor or CCW, we, we do all this stuff as well. And we run into people with those things as well. Um, people that just automatically assume that, hey, yes, I can take a gun, point it at a target, pull the trigger and shoot. And they don't realize how hard it actually is 
to hit a target, even a target that's not shooting back. But it's just, it's really hard unless you are, do a lot of shooting or unless you had learn how to properly shoot, it's really hard to actually pull that off. Mm -hmm. And not just how to shoot, but how to create space so that you can end up yeah, but I mean, I'm just like trying to break it down to like the most basic of levels. Yeah, you're right. You're always, you're always going to run into someone who knows everything. It's like I took this two-hour seminar with uh, these people and they said that that's bull. Yeah, well, let's be honest, though. The person that actually takes a two-hour seminar, they have a step up on the guy who watched a video on YouTube. I mean, you know, I don't, we're not here to rant on people like this. So don't don't get us wrong. That is not the purpose of this one. Actually, the purpose is this. Just know that it bothers us really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it started with a rant. But basically, <laughs> basically, what we really want everybody to do is let's back off and let's let's think about this. And I'm not trying to, I, I actually told somebody at a class we just had, I said, as an instructor, because I had some um, somebody come through that wanted to kind of eventually be an instructor. That's their goal. So I just said, just in the future, when you become an instructor, do not ever place yourself up on a pedestal because you eventually are going to fall. You're going to make a mistake. You're going to, and if you, unless you insulate yourself and protect yourself, and when you do, your stuff that you're teaching is probably going to be bull crap at that point in time anyway um, because you're not actually testing anything. But you're going to make a mistake in front of people. It's going to happen. Um, and if you do that then just accept it and move on. But if you have set yourself up on a pedestal to all of your people, students, people that come to your seminar, anything, then you have a lot further to fall when you make that mistake. The bigger the pedestal you build for yourself, okay. the further off that pedestal you're gonna fall whenever something goes wrong. I have been um, training and instructing for the last 21 years of my life. And, you know, the people I train with have changed. Yes. You know, I started off with much more local people than what I train with currently. You know, at this at this point and at this level of skill that I have reached, and I hate, I really, you have no idea how much I hate saying that, but it's just where we are in the moment. Um, where I am in my training, maybe that's a better way to put it, you know, I'm training with some of the best guys in the world at certain things. We got up with the guys from Cobra because what they were doing when it comes to stress scenario training when it comes to uh, like real life preparing people for self-defense, they are absolutely some of the best in the world at that. You've also trained with a couple Sensei Jimbo's, so you know how to recognize them. <laughs> That's just, I've trained with more than a couple of those guys. Not, usually not for any length of time, but enough to know, nah, it's not really the, the thing. You know, currently my firearms instructor right now was a trainer of special forces in the military. He trained SEAL teams he trained Army Rangers, you know. The goal is to never, ever, ever stop training. To always, no matter where you are in your skill level, to always find that next person that you need to train with. I've been doing this for 21 years, and I have not ran, run out of finding that next person. I'm always finding that next person that I need to train with, you know. So, I think I'm the greatest daughter in the world because we all know that my dad loves atomic bears. For his birthday, I got him the atomic bear tactile belt. It's great for everyday carry, it's extremely comfortable, and like every atomic bear item, you can get it for a lifetime warranty. Now I know that my dad's supposed to open this, but it's fine. Whoa, what's that? Just here you go. For me? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, this is awesome. I can't wait to see what you get me for my birthday. Oh no. Now, a lot of this talk has been on don't overestimate your own ability as an instructor. Yeah. But yeah. What this really goes back to is if you're learning about self-defense or you think that maybe it's just not all that necessary because 
you know, or you have a gun, or you have past military experience, or you have past law enforcement experience, or you just grew up roughhousing with your brothers and you think you can handle yourself. You know, I mean, we see all of those attitudes. The idea that you can just come out of that and suddenly fully able to defend yourself is just not true. No. It's just not. You always have to have the attitude if you want to be a good student, first of all, and if you want to be a safe person, you have to always look for the thing that you can learn. The people who know the most are the people who are most willing to learn. If you think that you don't have something to learn, then you're... The statement that the more I learn, the more I realize I have to learn is completely true. Yep. No person actively seeking knowledge is going to think that they know everything. But those actively seeking knowledge, odds are they know more than the average person. That's the goal. So, you know, basically what I want from everybody is to don't overestimate your ability. Or, you know, we go back to the gun thing because the gun's the easiest one to do, in all honesty. It just gives I, you I a sense of over, like, overpower, you know? Yep. So, you feel overly powerful. You're walking around, you're carrying a gun, something goes down, you're going to be able to pull that gun out deal with that situation, be the hero of the situation, and then be cheered on by people everywhere. In reality, that doesn't always happen because violence happens very, very quickly. The most common thing we hear anytime we're doing uh, any of the self-defense seminars and anything is like, I am so shocked at how fast it happens. I hear it all the time. We did... Um, <clears throat> I can't count how many times we heard that just in our very first abduction prevention seminar that we ran. You know, so many people said, it just came up to us afterwards like, I, j I just couldn't believe how fast it happens because it happens out of the blue. And you, and you know, you have to react very, very quickly. Now what they're referring to is our, is some of our interactive examples. So we'll have someone just walk towards them from, 21 feet away, you know, the 21 foot rule, or even further or closer, but we'll do it several different ways. And even with you just walking towards them and talking, they can't get a gun out and point and shoot. Yeah. It happens so much faster than you think. It's not, it doesn't happen in slow motion. You hear it with people who have car accidents, they say that time kind of slows down, but you got to think how many people in that time where they're like the time slowed down were able to actually react when it was slowed down it slowed down because you just there's so yeah, much going through your head so detail you take in so much detail at one time but the reaction part of that you still yeah uh, most of the time you don't get the reaction in even if time quote unquote slowed down mm -hmm. you know yep. it's the same with self-defense it may just all of a sudden be like oh crap, I can't believe this is happening, and you have all these thoughts running through your head of, I can't believe this is happening to me, this actually happens, you know, oh my gosh, they're coming at me, they're talking to me, I can't think. There's no reaction in there. It's your mind overthinking, and it may seem like time slows down just a little, but it happens so fast, because by the time that slowdown is over, they're already on top of you. There is a very famous quote, and I can't remember who said it right now, but said that, you know, in a self-defense situation or a real situation, you do not rise to the occasion, you fall to the lowest form of training. That, I would hope, would make people think. Because everyone thinks, and I think we've said it before, with a gun, everybody already thinks they're John Wick. They think they can hit anything. And statistically speaking, people... That bullet will take care of the problem <laughs> for me. Well, what if that bullet doesn't go where you want it to go? Without training, it's it's no good. Statistically, people that are being attacked sometimes cannot shoot a person that is standing five feet away from them. They will miss their target when they are five feet away. At five feet away, you've got to think. That's, they can reach their arm out and you can reach your arm out and hold hands, you know? You can reach out and hold someone's hand from five feet away, but some people can't point and shoot from that far. And it's just because of the stress of the situation. That person can be an amazing shot in just regular practice. Yeah. But or, if you don't you know, train under pressure. Yeah. If you don't train in a higher stress situation, you're not going to be prepared for a higher stress situation. Yeah. You know, and you can't always, because we're talking about firearms a little bit, you cannot just immediately uh, 
take a gun out to a range and stand there with someone yelling at you in your ear and you draw your gun and shoot, um, you can't like go running laps and come back and just like draw your gun and shoot and, and always count that to be safe. So like what are some ways that people can uh, like do some more stress related training that is safe without putting themselves in danger when it comes to firearms? Now it's really hard to do that with an um, actual weapon that mm -hmm. fires, you know, because you see people all the time accidentally miss something and accidentally shoot something, yep. you know, whenever they when the gun when they think the gun is unloaded. But there are alternative means to training with your actual gun when it comes to training under pressure, training under stress. You don't have to pull out your actual weapon and just hope that you didn't miss something, you know? Like we don't train people to pull out their actual gun and aim and shoot at a real person because it just teaches really bad habits. You need to have respect for the gun in your hand. Um, but what we do have is the cert pistol, which when you pull the trigger, it has a laser that points out. Now the cert is awesome and people are always amazed by it because it has real trigger pull and the real weight of a gun and um, when you get one you can eject the magazine which we do so much abuse to ours because we're doing so much like fighting over it and throw it sometimes it gets thrown on the ground you know we're so rough with it we're gonna probably purchase another one <laughs> we're purchasing multiples. yeah we're definitely purchasing multiples because we love it as a training tool but we want to be able to eject the magazine again but we broke ours but uh, that's not a regular thing they are so sturdily built <laughs> well no it's it's actually working perfectly fine it works perfectly fine the only thing with ours is just the magazine doesn't stay in anymore because we are so rough and mean to it, so. Yeah, we broke the little thing that's supposed to hold it in place. That's basically it. We broke our magazine release on it. But as far as the, you know, nobody knows it that comes in here. The yeah, we just have it taped on with black electrical tape and it blends in with the gun. But uh, the Sir Pistol has realistic trigger pull and realistic weight. And, you know, if you're not like us and abuse it completely, you know, it releases the magazine just it fine. It did take years of abuse before we... It did take years. But we, we train people to, under stress, have to aim and shoot the cert pistol. And you can see all the shaking. You can see uh, failures in trigger pull it's and... Especially you pair it with, the, like, the eye dry fire app. Oh, yes. So... I think it's awesome. The iDrive Fire app, it has been one of my favorite things that we have added to our training because you just get the app and you have it set up pointed at a target and so you put the person under stress, they have to aim and shoot and the iDrive Fire app uh, tracks where the laser hit on the target and even some of the trigger pull lines so that you can see your own tendencies. It is absolutely phenomenal. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Well, yeah. not really 10 out of 10. I mean, it has its little bugs if you don't know how to use it properly. Yeah, but once you get it, curve. yeah, once you get it, that learning curve figured out, you're you're good. It's great. Yeah, we are um, actually going to be posting a, a video on YouTube and Facebook about the you know, iDrive Fire app, just because we love it so much. Yeah. But everyone is so surprised by that cert pistol and how bad poorly they aim, even on a gun that doesn't have any recoil. That's the only downside to the cert pistol is that it doesn't have recoil, but the plus side of it not having recoil is that you can see where your tendencies are, even without recoil. Yeah, you're like, isolating your, your trigger pull, your breathing, um, you know, and all this other stuff. Even your follow through. Yeah, your follow through, yeah. So I think uh, the one thing that you don't get with a laser trainer like a, like a CERT is like that recall management, that hold, you know, the, your grip and your stuff like that. It doesn't come into play as much when you're pulling the trigger. Which is why it it's still important to train with your own firearm on a range. But the stress th training, you're not going to find any better way of doing it than no. with... No, not in a safe environment. Yeah, there, you're not going to find any better way of doing it than with something like the, the CERT. Do we have a coupon code with CERT yet? We do. Uh, so if you go to actually CERT, S-I-R-T, pistol.com, and if you use uh, Impact Defense as a coupon code, you get 10% off of all their, anything on their site. And they've got, which um, I may have to be trying out, they've got, they've got some um, knives, training knives as well. Oh, really? Yes. 
And they have now come out with like the Smith & Wesson, which I'm a, I like the M&P line pistols. So um, they have the Smith & Wesson. In a cert? In a cert. Oh, <gasps> no. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna, that, that, that's probably gonna be my next purchase. All right, and, sorry for the geek out drill. <laughs> yeah, we kind of got aside, but yeah, if you're interested in it, yeah, go to certpistol.com, that's S-I-R-T pistol.com, and uh, use the coupon code Impact Defense, all one word. Again, just like Atomic Bear. So um, use that over there. It gets you 10% off of any of their stuff. So they've got a lot of stuff. I mean, they've, they've when I bought that first one, it was when they first came out. So I've had that one for a long time, and it was modeled after a Glock 17. And really, really liked that. Well, now they've got the, the M&P type. They've got um, a couple, they got the smaller ones as well. So when I said I was, we were going to go buy multiples of them, yeah because they've got several different things now. Now we've done some stress training with airsoft guns too. The downside to yep. those is that you still have to buy the airsoft BBs and you have to wear protective gear because an airsoft BB going in the wrong place really hurts. You gotta have goggles. Yeah, you gotta have goggles and a face mask. I don't wanna be shooting BBs out your nose, you know? But that's why we love the cert pistol, just because unless you get a really expensive airsoft gun, you know. Yeah, you're not gonna come um, under the same weight and trigger pull and everything as a real gun. Yeah, I just love that the cert is just one time purchase and it just works. Well, something like that as well. We take the cert pistol and we take the iDry Fire app and we can work a lot of stuff and never actually have to go to the range. And we save a lot on ammo, especially right now since ammo is so freaking expensive. Yeah, so I don't think there's really any better way of training indoors um, than a cert. I'm out of coffee. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but people are always amazed at how poorly they do. Like they see the laser doesn't lie because it's shooting straight out of the barrel. Yeah. And you can yeah. adjust the sights and everything. You can adjust anyway. the sights, yeah. The, it doesn't lie, it just shows exactly where you would be hitting and it's clear to see. And people are always so surprised, they're like, it's so much faster than I thought, or it happened so much faster than I thought, and um, I, I didn't even hit it. Like, it, the laser hit the wall behind the person. I didn't even manage to hit. Yeah. And they're always so surprised. And really, most people are because, you know, it, they think that if they can stand there and just point at a target and shoot their target dead on every time, you know, they think, Oh, well, I'll be fine. It's harder to do under pressure. It's harder yes. to do under pressure when somebody is maybe running at you. It's harder to do under pressure when you are just like under pressure. You know, in, in stress or anything, it's just harder to do under pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, fine motor steel skills start to become a lot harder under pressure. Yeah, so whenever you said that it goes, you fall down to the most basic form of training, yeah, it's completely true. It's like, I know a lot of techniques. I do a lot of training. How many of those I'll be able to perform in an actual situation? It's probably gonna fall back to the basics, the one I've done, the ones I've done the most times, the one I've done reliably, which is why when we teach a self-defense seminar, we don't teach a ton of strikes. They're like, why don't you teach a whole lot of strikes? We're like, we choose the ones that take the least amount of perfection. Um, we choose the ones that go down to gross motor skills, and we choose the ones that cause the most damage for the least amount of you know, thought it takes to perform them. Something that you can throw out and cause damage without having to think about it too much because you're not going to be think able to think about it too much if you actually have to use them. And after we tell people that and then we show them under the stress drills, they're like, you're right. I wouldn't be able to do one of those crazy techniques. Which is why I can't stand the overcomplicated self-defense techniques that you see online now. Everyone's like, well, I watched this self-defense video and if I push the hand down and push the arm up and uh, it'll make the gun fall and then all I have to do is go into a simple arm bar and throw some knees and then I can take them down to the ground and Back search the them, down. yeah, and <laughs> search them for other weapons and then hold them there until the police get there. And I'm over here like, how many times do you actually practice it? Oh, me and my brother, we did it a couple times after watching the video. It's no problem every time. Sure. Sure. 
Real quick, could you stand right there for me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was working with some guys one time and a guy was talking about how he was giving me this big long thing about how he was doing this. Um, he had just d come back from this seminar and was talking about how to destroy a joint. You would like kick them and then you like hooked your foot in behind their ankle and then you drug their leg out from behind them and then you came back and you stomped on the knee and you did all this stuff. And he was explaining all of this stuff he was doing. And I'm going, do you honestly think you could actually do that if somebody was just not just standing there waiting for you to do it? I mean, that's, it just gets, I don't know, overly complicated. It's everybody likes the overly complicated stuff because it feels really cool and movie esque. And it, but the problem is it doesn't really work in real life. But we've kind of sidetracked a little bit from our. Oh, you know, I don't think we've yeah, sidetracked too terribly far because there are basically two different kinds: people who don't know anything, so, <laughs> people who don't know anything, <laughs> and think that they know that they're fine just because. Because they will rise to the occasion when the crap hits the fan. That's why. I make up for lack of knowledge and stubbornness. It's like, well, to a point, but. Yeah, I like to often joke that the reason I went undefeated in MMA was just because I was too stubborn to lose. You know, Which? I wasn't always the best striker. I wasn't always the best grappler. Uh, the one thing I was really good at was just kind of being a, a decent all around fighter. But just at the end of the day, I just, refused to lose in every fight I ever made, and that was kind of the reason I went undefeated. I know, yeah. and I'm just thinking about the, in an MMA type situation, that is extremely helpful. You that's know, it really works for you. Kind of situation. Yeah, but, but that's if, only one piece if of the you're equation. only relying on stubbornness to get you through, there are only so many stab wounds that you can take. <laughs> okay, <laughs> even, even, even in my fights in MMA, okay? Now, some of them were like what they call smokers because it wasn't always legal in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So they would have the um, smokers, which would be events that would be held inside like a school somewhere, like at a gym that would have a cage or a ring or something like that. So I fought in a few of those, somewhere between five and 10, probably before I went to the bigger fights. Um, but in the process of in, the, in there, if I had stepped in there, and I've seen a few guys do it, you go in with just stubbornness, you're still gonna get your butt kicked. It just is gonna take a lot longer. <laughs> you're just gonna get your butt kicked for a lot longer more period of time. More spread out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are just relying on your stubbornness and have no technical knowledge at all, you're probably just in for a much longer beat down. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you have the people who have tons and tons of useless training. Yeah. And they Been think- training bull crap for the last 15, 20 years. Yeah, they're over here like, I am super efficient in this. I'm like, have you ever done that while someone is actually trying to hit you back? It's like, oh, I don't need to. I'm too fast. <laughs> okay, sir. It's like, Please shut up and listen. <laughs> it's like, you know, the stat, 90% of all fights end up on the ground. And um, I was talking to a guy years and years ago. I said, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, do you guys ever like train for like, what if somebody takes you down? No, no, we, they can't take us down. You know, and then we, you get the other side of it of, I just took a ground defense training, so I'm perfectly prepared for that. It's like, do you ever train standing up? Yeah, it, it goes yeah, both it ways. It does go both ways. We it talked about the whole thing. Yeah, about we talked about how do you turn a, a BJJ black belt into a white belt? You just you just keep punching him. Yeah. <laughs> just, just beat him from black belt all the way down to white belt, you know. Now, I love BJJ and I love jiu-jitsu. Oh, I do too. Like, it's some of the best stuff you're going to find, but there are other aspects that they kind of miss. Got, got and it's sure just, you're preparing for it's just like our just forms of martial arts. Yeah. It's not just a sport BJJ school. You actually are doing a, a jiu-jitsu school that is going to teach you, like, what happens when you're getting hit, you know. I think that was awesome about my, I, I came out of a striking background and then get start doing BJJ with a guy and he was awesome about like going, okay, now you could get punched in this position. And then I had my brother who was also come from a striking background. We came from the same background and we went into that. So we just added, always constantly added strikes into it. So we knew exactly like, okay, what do we do here? If this is a real situation, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but we're not just picking on jujitsu and we're not just picking on traditional martial arts. It's just, it is a complete reality that Wherever you get training from, there are going to be holes. Yeah. And whenever you... I feel like this is a theme with some of the things that we talk about. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's our running theme. But there are going to be places that are lacking. Like, 
if you just take a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu self-defense course, odds are you're not going to be fully prepared for if someone is just coming at you standing up or maybe with a knife or with a gun, you know? I, e even Krav Maga, which is big for self-defense, still has places that it's missing and you can never be fully, always be opening to learning something else because if you think that you are fully prepared for any situation, you're wrong. Yeah. I don't care who you are, you're just wrong. It's like, I am not fully prepared for every situation, but I'm constantly learning and looking for where I can get better. So I am more prepared than most. Yeah, no, no, yeah and, th and that's all we can do because I don't care if you are, you know, if, if you're the, the average guy who's just trained for, you know, two months or, or not at all, or, or you are the Army Ranger, Navy SEAL, uh, you know, that's been doing stuff for most of your life, I guarantee there are situations where that person is still not going to be like 100% prepared for everything. Because you can't be. It's not possible. It's just you're going to try to fill in as many holes as possible along the way. You know? Moral of the story is just don't be overly arrogant. Yeah, I mean, be willing to notice that, or to know that you're going to have some shortcomings. Everybody's going to have some shortcomings. We can't just go, I can do it all, and I'm great in every situation, and I don't care how much you've been training. You know, you, you the thing is, in your journey, you're going to look at it and go, okay, I'm going to start here in this place of I have nothing, and then I'm going to work on, you know, work a little further you know, getting my mindset, awareness, all the mental aspects, start moving a little further into like some hand-to-hand -hand stuff, moving a little further into some like stand-up grappling, you know, moving a little further. And you can go as far down that road as possible. Uh, speaking of this, and I didn't really think about this, we are putting together kind of a, uh, a resource, I guess, for everybody. And for the most part, a lot of the information on there is free, but it is a, what we call a roadmap to safety, where we've got we start at that mental level and we start pointing people to different um, videos or uh, articles or podcasts or anything down the line that we are working and kind of linking to some stuff as ours, some stuff as like uh, friends of ours that are in the business. Um, you know, it's just different things that you can look into along the way that's going to help you out in different stuff all the way from absolutely nothing all the way down to like firearms, rifle, all of that kind of stuff as well. Um, now, it's not completely built out. So if you're going to look at it, uh, this is this is kind of going to be growing along as we do these things, as we have time to work on that. All right, guys, so you can actually find that at impactdefense.online slash roadmap. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, be sure to do that. The whole idea we're trying to put out there is to get the most well-rounded training you can and then to always be looking and open-minded to other forms of training. Like I think the best thing that we offer right now is that integrated combatives. Oh yeah, the weekend long workshop. Yeah, that is like we do a weekend long workshop where we cover standing, we cover ground, we cover weapons and then we do standing and ground with weapons and then we do abduction Rest. prevention and we do we just put together the most well-rounded 20-hour course that we could. We will actually be taking people out to the range for one day of that or for a few hours of that as well. Our whole goal is to produce the uh, best training we can that covers the most. And I think with that one, it's just, it's my favorite of the things that we've done just because of how much is involved. We have a lot of people really excited about that. And, you know, I want to be completely honest so we're doing that one again in april um like the second weekend of april is that right yeah the ninth through the 11th mm -hmm. we're gonna be doing that so if you're hearing this before that we are offering that one right now at 189 and that is definitely the next time we do it we're definitely gonna go up on that because but it's it's a, it's a lot of time it's a lot to put together um you know we're having to pay range fees for everybody we're doing all this other stuff as well so there's a lot added into that cost, but but you're never going to find something with more. No, not at that involved. price. And nowhere yeah, near no. that price. Nowhere near. Um, so. pro there are people offering similar things for almost six hundred. Oh no, a lot more than that. A lot more than that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, I live closer in to a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we're based in Lexington, North Carolina. No one has that much to spend on that. <laughs> 
Yeah, and we actually have some people that are traveling in to come to that one. So it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I'm excited. About yeah, but we are super looking forward to it. And uh, you know, what? if you ever get the chance to do it, this isn't us speaking out of arrogance. We just we want people to be safe. Yeah. And so if you have any interest or want really well-rounded training and are just able to commit a weekend to that, do it. Yeah. And if you have the money to go to someone else, I mean, that's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, just, they're okay. Just get training, yeah. please. Yeah, the whole idea is just we want people to be trained want, and, and, get, and be broke. safe. <laughs> we just also don't want people to go broke. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Look for our next episode. I'm really, I'm actually very excited about the next episode that we're going to do because uh, fairly recently, within the last couple of weeks, uh, Jada and Kylie both went through a, essentially a junior uh, pistol instructor uh courses and they have yeah so since i am not yet 21 i can become an assistant pistol instructor but not a full pistol instructor yeah. um and that will just change when i turn 21 he'll send in the recommendation email you know unless he decides you know i don't <laughs> unless he decides you just suck yeah but i don't think that's gonna happen uh <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Kylie became an apprentice pistol instructor, and then I became an assistant pistol instructor. But the next, our next podcast, they are actually going to talk about their experience doing that with it was a quite bunch interesting. of grown men. Uh, because, you know, uh, they just, they, go th they make them go through the same program exactly as um, the adults who are going for the full instructor. Um, so, it was interesting. Yeah, we're going to... I'm I'm gonna step back from the next one. I'm actually really excited because I'm 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 very curious to hear some of their. I was there, but I'm very curious to hear some of their um, experiences from their perspectives, and um, I know some of the stories, so I think it was hilarious. I think the real highlight is just Kylie's side of the story, because I have I'm a little bit older. I was able to blend in a little bit more, <laughs> but. Uh, she was saying the 13 year old girl kind of stood out amongst all yeah. the all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but her side of the story, there, there are just some hilarious aspects. Um, and I was just so proud. <laughs> I was so proud of her. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, that's for next time. Um, guys, thank you very much. Uh, be sure to check out, you know, our sponsors and our partners on our website. We have a, a page dedicated to our partners on the website. Anything you guys look, if you're interested in any of the, any of those, um, you go through the links on our website there. That actually helps us out. So we would really appreciate that. And um, just, yeah, thank you very much. Train. And even if you don't intend on buying one, go ahead and look up the cert pistol. Yes. Um, just so that you guys ca like, can see what we're talking about here when we talk about this, because it really is phenomenal. And so even if you don't- It is my favorite gun training tool. Yeah, so even if you don't want to get one, just go in, do, do us a favor, go in and look it up and just, that way you have a point of reference. Whenever we say cert pistol, you can picture exactly what we're talking about. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, I hope you were able to pull out our point through that long rant that we just had. Uh, stay alert, stay safe, and we will see you guys in the next podcast. See you guys. Thank you for listening to the Impact Defense Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about how to keep yourself safe, check out the articles, videos, courses, and seminars at www.impactdefensenc.com. We also do training for security teams, churches, businesses, groups, and more. Stay sharp, stay focused, and train hard.